one. Okay, that's recording. And what I will do is share this and then go. I'm very good. Right. Very, uh, very, very good. I'm glad to hear that in this lockdown weather, it's um, it's good that we're all in good health and uh, keeping our yes, yes, things together. But um, so is it Sam Samuel? What do you prefer? Well, um, my family, uh, it all it's all started in family. So when I was born, Samuel, but. All my family calls me Samuel. Then when I started the high school, everybody started calling me Sam. I think, well, I don't like Sam. But now most people call me Sam. And then my auntie calls me Sammy Jammy. <laughs> I know. And also, and Dave Elliott calls me Sammy Jammy as well. Yeah, I've yet to have the uh, pleasure of Dave, so. Yeah. So, uh, I'll call you Samuel then. It's good for Yeah, call me Samuel. Yep. Make it nice yeah. and official. So, um, this is talking about composition, so uh, when, when did it start, the music writing? Um, probably, you could do this amazing thing. Yeah, probably when I was young. So my granddad, who's quite, he's called me the bandmaster kind of army, and he's into his music and he's into his military music, and he used to be in forces in the Paris, and when I was young, I always loved, I always loved music. I had a passion for music. And then um, my granddad gave me a software called Sibelius. Yeah. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. So I had it on my laptop. And I was, and then I looked at some scores. I was thinking, well, let's just copy some scores and get used to Sibelius. Mm -hmm. So I had, so, so he gave me like pieces. He gave me, he gave me Shine as a Light. He gave me Glossico. He gave me loads of all the pieces. And then I used to write them up and say, here we go, I've done this. Um, but really, he said, you should start writing your own music. I was thinking, really? So, yeah, I was quite young when I was writing my music. So I probably started when I was about, about 12 years old, nine years old. Not quite Mozart then, but close to it. No, not, not, not quite Mozart. Okay. 11 or 12. Oh, and I probably got the hang of Sibelius when I started doing like small ensembles. Yeah, well, I, no I noticed that um, on the list you've got a lot, you've got a few scripture based song arrangements. Yes, on your own. So I think we ran through your graces enough. I think that's where I know the name from. Bow the yes, morning into dancing. It's really nice pieces by the looks of it. And yes, um, sort of sensible, They're not sort of you know over ambitious, but you know, they get to the no. vaults of the tune. Hmm. So, um, having started out writing, um, you got published. Uh, when was the first time you heard a piece of you, your music being played, and where? Well, it all started from, in practice. It was in Wipey Band. I wasn't very old, so I sent this piece to my. It was Wipey Band leader, um, Andy Elliott, who's Dave Elliott's son. Send this piece to Andy, thinking, oh, I've done this arrangement of overall, overall the earth. Simple, you're into series. All I had was some like tune book or scripture base started. And then, yeah, but that never got played out again. So I hated it. <laughs> but the first piece I ever had played out was a piece in Summer School. And we used it for the final celebration. It was called Heart and Mind. And back in, I'm trying to think now. A while ago, maybe. 2013, sorry, 2013. And, um, excuse me, I'll go back off. <coughs> and, and Roland Spencer was the leader then. And um, that year, when I finished it, Bandmaster Graham Lampro died. Yep. 
And um, when I finished the piece, I, I said, well, let's dedicate this piece to Graham. So I know Anna goes, was Anna? on staff, and it was quite hard for her. Very good friend of mine, Anna. Yeah. So, yeah. So Anna heard a piece, I had another standing ovation, and I think that was my very first piece I'd played was Heart of Mind. It's not been put down to it since. I've been told you've won awards for your music. So what were they and what was the music? Yes, back in 2016, um, I heard somebody from Oakingate's Court said, well, you should send some music to this competition. I was thinking, what competition? I said, this competition. So I said, okay, but it was the Iron Bridge, sorry, not Dighton Iron Bridge Composer Competition. Never heard of it. So basically, I wrote a piece for a British brass band called Makka, which is the Finnish word for journey. And I was talking about my journey through music. And then I submitted it. It took me about four weeks, tried it, tried it through, submitted it, and then I sent it to the thing, did a little paragraph, same thing. And then the next couple of months later, I don't know, saying, hi, Samuel, congratulations, you won first place. Out of the blue. Lovely. But well, unfortunately, unfortunately, I couldn't attend the awards because I think I was on holiday or something. Or I was working. <laughs> yeah. It's always the case, isn't it? Yeah. The important occasion so, comes up and you're on the beach enjoying yourself. And, oh. Yeah. And then back, and then a TMS, I sent this piece to Steve Cobb and Andrew Blythe, said I've won this piece. And I was thinking, oh, okay. And then I'll, by random, I'll put, I got put in Steve Cobb's band. And then we played it through. So I never heard it played. Played it through. First time we played it. But of course, we didn't use it for the final celebration. We played it through one rehearsal. Uh, that must have been quite the experience. It was. It was quite quite an experience today. Um, you've, uh, I've been told, because obviously when I had asked the questions, I said, well, like your good self, we've not met in person. This is very much a first time interview, which I'm very glad yeah. to. So I don't know a lot about you other than your name on a piece of paper, which is good. So I can ask the backstory. Uh, you travel a lot, but I've been told you went to the United States of America. What was that for? Yes. So back in 2018, um, it all started at TMS. So there was already three percussionists already. And I said, right, well, I'm not in the A band. The next thing is Ashley Duran came to my band, called me. I was thinking, oh, what have I done now for which in trouble? The next thing is, do you want to be in the A band to play community for percussionists? And then on the last year, so Steve, Steve said, oh, I want to take this band to America to do the Rose Bowl Parade. Wow. So I did, yeah, I did the Rose Bowl Parade. Really so, so there's two people from Canuck. So it was me and Joe Pearson who went from Canuck. It was a very good experience, a very tiring one as well. Yeah. I did not get. I didn't like getting up at four o'clock in the morning, New Year's Day. So, yes, I did. I have watched it a couple of times. It's the, the amount of musicianship is immense. It's, it's very good, but it's a long march, it's a very yeah. long march 5.5 miles. If I remember, you just play Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, don't you? No, we played um, two arrangements from, by Kevin Larson. Yeah, I know Kevin. So, we played Amazing Grace, and this is my story. Wow, right. So, so we've got a real variety. And then we have to keep repeating, repeating it. When we go past the cameras, play one tune, and then we was, when we're past the cameras, we can mix off. Wow. So it was okay. a great experience. So, um, wait, I mean, you, you talked about um, Sibelius, Cybe I will try and pronounce it right. Um, yeah. When you're outside of the ability, are you a notepad man, mobile phone man? You know, if you're out walking and a tune comes to you and you think uh, it's interesting, is it something that's in your sphere? Not really notepad or mobile phone. I normally, it's normally in my head. I normally, if I go to sleep, I'll start singing a band piece, I'm going to start writing the next day. So I'll be that's like, mm, blah, 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 blah. I'll be like, oh, that could work. So I'm like, in my hand, I could do play a bit of piano, but not greatly. I could play a few chords, but, um, but normally it's just straight on the Then I work on my harmony and that. 
that's so, interesting. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's been interesting to hear a lot of people how they compose, and some say, you know, their phones are full of little jingles and jangles. And yeah, you know, do you, do you find Sibelius a, a liberating experience when you're writing for a small band? Because obviously, yes. the full potential of an Albert Hall type piece if you only want to do a mini ensemble kind of thing. Yeah, it is, because sometimes, because I think a few days ago, I wrote someone for, I wrote a piece for someone, to call it trombone and tuba for the YMCA, so that was quite interesting to do. But yeah, with this space, you can expand, you can have a full ultra, you can have like two people or even one person. Interesting, so. yeah. Uh, you will remain anonymous, but the quote is, I'm told that if I pick up one of your compositions, I will tell straight away which your favourite instrument is in the band. Which one is it and why? So in the band, I play percussion. Hey, and, I've hey. always, and I've always been a fan of percussion. And, you can tell, and when people see my music, you can tell it's a drummer, he writes the hard drum parts. So yeah, I've, I can play, I, then when I was seven, I started off on the cornet. It was an instrument for me. Then I moved to tuba. So, yeah, I prefer tuba. So normally, normally open if if one if I'm main bass player, I'm normally on tuba. But then I get messed around. But I'm normally on E flat. But if they haven't got no E flats or B flats, I'm chucked on tuba. Tuba, if not, I'm back on drums. <laughs> so yeah, drums my main instrument. Yes, I, I I've said a while that my um, old bandmaster was a uh, trained in the old military, so. I had to oh, right. um, march style, so I can't do a kit. I can do bass drum or snare drum separately. I wish I could play kit, but with all the music, yeah. I've got a kit player, so I can keep the beat when he's busy doing all the jingle jangle. So it's interesting to, to, to meet a fellow percussionist. They're not yes. little horn players. So um, uh, you're the uh, current, I believe you are the assistant band leader at your core in Canada, do you enjoy this? Yes, so I've been a system wide band leader for about just nearly two years in about October, I think, roughly October time. So, and so I took, so Andy Elliott was the wide band leader and Chris Elliott was assistant wide band leader. And then Andy sat down and I took the system wide band leader, but we've got no YP leader, so me and Chris do the assistants. So taking turns, I normally to go for the high end stuff. He goes for like the repeated stuff. So I'll try and bring new pieces out and pieces we haven't played for years. Okay, yeah. So yeah, but it's lovely. Yeah. We um, as a YP, we have gone down in numbers. Yeah. Um, but but we're doing okay. We are going. Hopefully, we'll get something coming up soon. But at the time. Doing okay. Are they the guinea pigs for new Shelley music then? Uh, I don't know. They're, some of them do like my music. Some of them do like my music. So normally, Chris will say, um, can you write this part out or can you rearrange this part? I'm normally the guinea pig for music for the for the band and the wifey band. Oh, God. Is that enjoyable? Do you enjoy that challenge? Yeah. So normally, so I think one thing for the senior band, um, the grander wanted to use this march comment the Valdris March. Oh golly man. Um so, so yeah um, some people hate it but he heard this concert band I found this concert band from James Perno. So he yeah. said oh trans Who's transcribe this. Sorry? It does ring a bell. Yeah James Perno. Um so tra I transcribed it and said hey wants to use it but and then when we and then when we got it and Andy was like, oh, he, he didn't hate it because he was a corner silo at the start. <laughs> but to be honest, I, I do a lot, I can do a lot of transcribing. I, I'm very people say I'm very good at transcribing. Like if I'm going from general series to unity series, I'm very good at it. That's so interesting. My, to match match the harmony. Yeah, that's interesting. Because normally it's making more instruments from the unity to expand it rather than to bring it back down. Yes, yeah, so going back, like going to transcribing, um, so I've transcribed a few pieces. So I did, for the, Chris wanted to use The Lord is Gracious. So I got I got the general series book, transcribed it for Wife Band. And then I did some stuff for Albury Corps. 
which have got some connections with Lehigh to Nichols. And he asked, well, what unit stuff have you got? I said, I've done Guardian the Soul. I've done Rose Hill. I've done a few others. So I did Dance Lord David. I've done Let There Be Light. I've done Shine hey. as Light as You. Shine as Light as You to series. Serious? So, yeah. Yeah. I did try my best, but <laughs> it didn't go very well. I have to see some of the, the bits for these to see them scored down. Incredible work. Would you, would you dare put them in for publication? Um, not too sure because I, I'm not too sure because I haven't got, I haven't had many pieces published with the army. Mm-hmm. So it's not me. I've had more pu- pieces published with um, Lake Music, mm-hmm. which um, Dean introduced me to. Yeah. And that my first, so when I won that award for Macca, that was my first publication with Lake Music as well. What, as a composer and arranger, what do you find is the difference between outside composing and your army composing? Even if it's just down to the arranging, is it just down to the arranging or what? Um, most of my pieces do including in June. Literally all my pieces. So at the moment I've been writing music for my local band. So I've started playing with Stature Band and Unleashed the Craig um, Williams. So we we played two of my pieces last year, which are non-army, non-army pieces. One of the pieces were called Off Distant Land. And that was that's a tribute to 100 years since the end of the First World War, and also a tri- tribute to um, Dean Jones as well. Mm, that, yeah, the name rings a bell. Yeah. Mm. Mm, can't um, it. It'll come to me. No. And then my and then we played. Um, a big Christmas one called Celebration of Christmas, which I know a load of bands have played it, including Burning Shit, they played at Symphony Hall, which, which I was hey. gutted to And also, I got told, um, before I went to America, Tunstone Rand School, which I had some strong connections yep. with Neil Smith. Yep. I'll go back to Neil Smith in a bit. And yeah, so yeah, I'm writing music. They call me the composer of residence for the Staffordshire Band. So I've written a piece okay. called Invisible. So I caught, I, I wrote them a piece. I was, before lockdown, I was about to print it off, but then I forgot to print it. And the next rehearsal, I found I forgot no more rehearsals. So it's called Invisible, and it's written for the Stature Band, but it, it features a tune which most of the band likes, which is Immortal Invisible. Yeah. And I've done it like, I've tweaked it with a few test pieces. So. A test from test pieces of included and some of the and the history of Stash of Band. So it's basically an open. But it's got some difficult rhythms and a difficult drum path for me and Ian. So yeah. But I do write I do write a lot of music for the Stash of Band. Um I have wrote pieces for my core band. And I've wrote pieces for the outside for the core bands as well. Do you want me to carry on with this? I think Carry On is very interesting to hear about your composition. Yes. I'm, I'm, so, I'm kind of, you know, what happened with the scripture-based compositions? Were you asked to do them or did you come across them? And um, Right, it all started when I, the first one, the first ever piece I published for scripture-based was Your Grace Was Enough. 2015. 2015, I've gone now, how long have you that? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I heard that, I heard that song, I heard that song from summer school, which I'm an employer in I was thinking, no, it's on a band arrangement like that. So I did, duh, 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 duh. so I wrote it, tried it with the band. I was thinking, it should send it to Andrew. But then, at the time, I heard Dean Jones sort out scripture based. Then that's how I met Dean Jones. So, so yeah, so I sent it, and the next thing is, a couple of months later, yeah, it's due for submission. Lovely. And then Baldene, it's Baldene is probably my popular piece, popular like, yeah. arrangement. Yeah. So I tried it with my core band. We played it at my enrollment. I asked for that for my enrollment. And then Dean Dean Jones heard of it. I didn't want to try with Cyrus and Russ. We played Cyrus and Russ loved it. I want to try it. And then I heard um, Andrew Blythe done an arrangement of that. And he had his first, got that published first. <laughs> Uh, but then Dean said, instead of going to race, let's put it in the scripture base. Yeah. 
So it's such a good yeah. tune and some, a powerful message, isn't it? Baldenay. Powerful message. But I know loads of bands always ask for Baldoni. That's my probably my popular piece at the music. moment. Yeah, that's probably my popular piece is Baldoni, <laughs> which I wrote back in two thousand and fourteen. I think two thousand and fourteen, two thousand and fifteen. Yeah. Because obviously, when they're published, it's not the order when they're written. They can sit on the shelf no. for some time, and then it, oh, and you want to publish it? I better dust it off and give it a final polish, kind of thing. Yes. So, um, who, when you're in, when you're writing music, you know who are the uh, your mentors? Who are the people? Um, and you, you know, email addresses. I'm a bit stuck here. Advice. You know, I've got, I've got, got, I've got, I've got, I've got. Quite a lot of mentors. I've got a big list of mentors. Nice. Um, first, firstly, um, talk going back to heart and mind. Um, my granddad emailed Andrew Blythe, thinking, okay. Then Andrew Blythe heard the piece and he and he invited me down to London to meet him and Kenneth Downey, oh. which was a big, which a big impact. Oh, I bet it was. It was lovely. Then Ken Downey sat me down and said. I was thinking, why have we done a march star red and like ba 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 He's, he's supported me through my music career and he's also got me involved in Salvation Bass, which I love being a part of. Yeah, it's a good um, and the next, men the next mentor is my granddad. My granddad is being like, he introduced me to Brass Band. He took me, when I was about 10 years old, I went to my first contest and I managed to meet the composer, Peter Graham. Oh, lovely man. Only met him once, but lovely man. I've met him quite a few times. I've met Peter quite a few no times. So yeah, Peter, so my granddad's have been inspired and he's been supporting me throughout this, throughout my music career and also my brass banding. And he took me to like most of my drum exams. So my granddad is one. Uh, another one is Paul Sharman. Paul's, um, going back to TYB with Steve, Steve Cobb, we used to have a Samuel Shelley night on a Wednesday <laughs> night. And on a Wednesday night, so um, Jonathan Evans and... Oh, come on, we've got to know how the, uh, the Shelley nights came about. So, so get that drift off. So most of, people, most of them knew me from Westman Summer School. And I went to TYB for the first time because uh, Nigel Govier introduced me to TYB. And then... Um, Shelly nights were, was happening straight after the ISB night. After the ISB night on a Wednesday, it was Shelly night. So I basically put my laptop down, played loaded in my composition. And, and then Paul said, I recognise this piece, I recognise this piece. And they said, I'll, I'll, I'll call a piece called, I think it was a Christmas one, and then I took a sample of Christmas, his piece called Quest. Yes. Went, ba -ba 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 -ba, and I stuck it in a Christmas piece and it worked. <laughs> It worked very well. But everybody thinks I'm like, he's like, I everybody thinks I'm like a new Paul Sharman for his dirty bass lines and his funky drum with it. So talking about his dirty bass lines. Very one inventive is, Paul Sharman, very inventive. Yeah. One of his piece I had the idea from was um was Blessing Honor for a piece called Vision. Yeah. Which I wrote in 2015 for the summer school. And that recently got played at uh, the welcome for students at the William Booth College last year. Really? Oh. Yeah. By the Southern Youth Band. I didn't know that. Next thing is, I was thinking, da, 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 da. I was thinking, that's my piece. <laughs> thinking, I don't, uh, yeah, because I can remember saying it, sending it down to Southern, but yeah, mm -hmm. I know that that week as well, another band played one piece, but I can't remember which band played my piece. Yeah, so yeah, Paul's yeah. another. Paul's and Paul Sharman's another one. And also my final one is probably going to be Stephen Ponsford. Ah, oh, lovely guy. So, Stephen oh, Ponsford, <laughs> Stephen Ponsford helped me, so our big piece called, 
combo with the combo with the name now, but it's a Spanish name. But it helped me because he sent me um, he, he sent me a couple of his scores, so I can look I can look over and review yeah. them and make notes over them. And he says, um, yes, look at that for your harmony. Harmony was a struggle to me, but I know. But Andrew Bryce said a couple of weeks, probably a couple of months ago, the harmony is improving. Lovely. So, yeah, Stephen Ponce did another one. Got real big hitters in. So you've got some real positive um, influences that can really give you strength. It's good, it's good to hear because some of them are really nice people. So, well, yes. they're all really nice people. I, I, I can only speak for the ones I've met. Um, so outside of your mentors, I mean, who are the uh, composers that, you know, whether they're still with us or no longer in the Salvation Army world that music is put on the stand that you thoroughly enjoy playing and being a part of? Composers, there's quite a lot of composers I'm interested in. Uh, one of them is at, at the moment is Andrew Wainwright. I love Andrew Wainwright's music. Yeah. Uh, one of his pieces particularly is Variation on Wes That's one yes. of my favourite. That's what I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed playing that when I went over to America with the A band and played at Pasadena. I enjoyed that music. Uh, another piece, I think, composers wise, is Eric Balls. I do like a few, I do like quite a lot of Eric Balls pieces. He's a masterclass, Eric Balls. Masterclass. And also a piece. I do enjoy, I can't remember the composer, oh, who's the composer's name now? No, it's gone, it's gone in my head. I, I can't even remember the piece. Oh. oh Favourite piece ever then? Um, no, it's gone, but my favourite piece at the moment is Variation Where's the Bet. That's my favourite piece. But, oh yeah, um, ideas from, um, favourite piece, Paul of the Cooper pieces. I like his big. Oh, PLC, yeah. Yeah, PLC. I do love PLC's music as well. Very, very, one of the only composers I know of who can conduct a band without a score. Yes. I've seen his com conducting the New York Staff Band, and that is just magical. Yeah, and I saw him conduct um, Cardiff Canton Band without a score, three of his pieces without a score. I think one of my favourite pieces of his at the moment is Lloyd, his arrangement of Lloyd. Yeah. So when, when you, that leads me on to another, in, well, I find an interesting question. As an arranger, how do you keep yourself original when you're arranging a tune that's been used before in other arrangements? How do you make it different? I just look at, see, if I'm, for example, if I'm doing an arrangement of Amazing Grace, here we go, there's a tune for an example. If I did an arrangement of Amazing Grace, I know quite a lot of composers have done amazing plays like Richard Phillips, Martin Corner, some ex Bill Himes. Yeah. But some people might not do it in a different style. So I would look at see what harmonies they're using, if it's going to be a bit long, more likely, it's going to be more slow. I just use different styles and see, use my styles and might do the big ending or slow ending. So yeah, I'll just look at different tunes. Can arrange. Do you have a favourite genre of music to write, to arrange? Is this um, what do you feel really comfortable doing, or do you just enjoy the challenge? I just enjoy the challenge. I I do like loads of different arrangements. I think I think my, my I did a rock arrangement of Heart the Held Angels Sing. A rock arrangement. A rock arrangement, which has oh, gone nothing. really that went really really well. So I wrote it for my mum for her timbrels called Angels Rock. <laughs> wow. It was called Angels Rock. And that was very good. And it was on the, because, and then a few of us had kind of made a CD. I can't remember the CD it's called now. Um, we made a Christmas CD and, we, and they said we were going to put it on there as well. And we added electric I guitar in. I I mean, I mean, and we added um, electric guitar in it as well. Which is cool. quite cool. Why the bad? Oh my goodness. So, I mean, it was a, it wasn't my idea. Callum, my mate Callum mixed all the tracks and he said, oh, I'm going to stick with some electric guitar in that piece. Okay, then Callum stick with some electric guitar in. So, um, apart from your extensive army career and outside band music, uh, what other things do you do with your time? Not that there's much left of it, I the sounds of it. <laughs> so, um, I'm currently working at um, APC, which is uh, a nationwide delivery service. So, I work 
for massive re, um, delivery and sortation, which I'm now a yard marshal. I'm focused on my eighth week mm -hmm. there. So at the moment, we're delivering stuff for the NHS. And people buying TV, all you can see most of the time is tyres, TV, NHS. I had glue chucked over me one night, so I didn't like. Came out the, came out the lobby. Um, I do a bit of DJing. I do like my DJing, so most people call me DJ Sam. Okay, that makes sense. I, I did hear that. So, <laughs> so most people call me DJ Sam, and I do like doing a bit of sound and noise. So, so one thing I was honoured to do, item was to be asked to do musical theatre today with Steph Lamplo. Okay, back yeah. in London. Back in Region Tour, that was on it because they, they know I did sound and also. Not last year when they had John Larson there? No, I didn't do John Larson. I did, I think I did one with Graham Lampo, but Gavin Lampo stepped in. I, I was at the John Larson one. I, I, did, I couldn't do, I didn't ask, I think I asked that one. I did the second one, I was meant, and I was meant to do in this year as well. Uh, no, well, not under that. <laughs> I know, what happened to that? So, yeah. So I did a bit of lighting. So I'd also I do lights and and the tech for Nexus Youth Choir, which is officially called West Midlands Youth Choir. Yeah. So, um, which I'm, you mentioned in the choir, uh, vocal music is that part of your repertoire, or is it just um, vocal music? I, to be honest, I don't really like much vocal music. My first, I did write a piece back. A very long time ago, um, my mum messaged um, Harry Reid, which we've got some strong connections with. Um, Harry Reid's wrote some words and called it Bethlehem Star. And I said, let's write me a melody. I was thinking, right, I like this melody. My mum did not like it. So basically, she put my name on it, but she basically wrote the melody. I didn't even write it. I think I only wrote two bars of it. But yeah, I don't write much choir. I don't write much choir stuff. Honest, yeah, is I'm that not because quite... it's just a personal preference or because of um, the technical difference? Technical difference, to be honest. Um, I don't write, I'm not a pianist, I'm not the best pianist. No. I have done stuff for, I, do, I did, I did an arrangement of what a beautiful name for Northern Summer School, which Hayley still asked me to do. I'm currently doing a project which should be on YouTube or Facebook in a couple of days' time with a choir. Mm. But that's with the choir and the brass band. I, like, I don't mind if it's a choir and a brass band. Yeah. So my one of my first arrangements I did for choir and brass band, I heard this song um, called A Joyful Noise, which is America. And then I put yeah. band arrangements. It's a good, it's a good choir song. And then next is you. Then the first night, when I heard the post, I said, Lee, I did a arrangement of Joyful Night. Because um, Contra Brass, aka Soul Race and Brass, was invited to do the band. So then Dean said, right, let's use your arrangement. So basically we did band the choir and I had the privilege to conduct the band. Wow, lovely. Do, do you enjoy the conducting aspect or would you rather be behind the scenes? I, I, enjoy, I, enjoy, I enjoy conducting. I did enjoy conducting, but I'd rather be behind the scenes. Yeah. Is it, is it difficult for the band? Because obviously if you're playing, if you're conducting something you wrote, Rather than somebody else's pieces, do you, do you sort of get aggressive? No, that's not how I wrote it to the band members. No, um, yeah, I do get aggressive. So going back to conducting, um, I think back in February, I got invited to Doctor Green Memorial while the band practice. Because um, back in October, September, I got an email saying, Oh, we, we've heard your composer, can you write this piece? Because somebody from their call called Tom, who was fortunately diagnosed with cancer, unfortunately he's passed away now, um, told me to write a piece called um, His Fairy Tune Was Great As I've Opened. So I used a song, which, um, which I heard from another piece from um, Roger Trigg, called Faithful, and I used a song, um, oh, what's the song that? It's got, I know it's got a great faithfulness in it by Sarah Groves, I think. And then Gav Lamplow brought the piece, and I'm thinking, that's a, such a lovely piece. So I used it, and then, then I had the opportunity to conduct that piece at Nottingham Wolf Band, and I had the opportunity to conduct the senior band as well. But and then I brought another two pieces, so I basically adapted one of Dean Jones' piece. Ooh, that, called, that gave you a headache. Yeah. <laughs> 
called My Redeemer Lives, and also a piece which I wrote for Staple Hill YP Band called Shine, which is a popular piece. I know been, been, loads of people asking for the arrangement because I know Boom City on influence in general. Um, no, it's City or YP Band have done it. My core band are enjoying My kids' YP Band is enjoying it. Oh. No, we're okay. Are we okay? Yes, we're okay. Yeah. So I think I, I don't think my internet. I don't think my internet's very good. You're fine. Carry on. I can hear you. Where was I? Um, uh, uh, Stat Canton Band. The uh, people. Were oh yeah, 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 yeah. Canton quite a band. So yeah, so Shine is popular. Then um, Stable Hill Sister Band. So Neil Baker messaged me saying, uh, "This theme's called Shine. Can we have these two songs in it?" What a band, please. Um, straight off the subject completely, another anonymous question that I have a feeling you'll know full well where it comes from. I hear you've been studying at university. What were you studying? How did you get on? Um, yes, I was studying um, music technology and I've done very well because I've just passed my degree. So I've now got Bachelor of Science wow. with Ron's oh, yeah. in music technology. So my graduation is meant to be in July, but now it's in October. So, so yeah, I'm just waiting for my award to come now. So yeah, it was a very, it was very good. Very good, start to Very, very good. Very good. Okay. Um, so what's in the what's on the schedule page? Uh, commissions or uh, Shelley ideas coming out? What's next in the um, So at the moment, I'm doing a couple of projects at the moment. So. I'm doing more, I'm doing another one for Staple Hill World Band, which is in March, which I haven't touched for a while. Um, Steve Cobb, when Steve Cobb's is one person who is a big impact in my life as well. And um, when we was about to board a paint, he said, Are you right? Steve said to me, out of there, are you right too much? And I was thinking, I don't know why. Um, and he said, oh, I want you to write a piece for TYB. So he's asked me to write a piece, Total Youth Band. This was two years ago. I've only just started the piece. So I'm only, I'm only on like bar four to two. It's going to take me a while to write, but hopefully it'll be ready soon. Do, do so yeah, that's... Is it, is it tough to get the, the creative juices going? Or um, you've got an idea of bouncing out? Um, it's, quite, it's quite tough, but... It just bounces out. So normally, normally I just push down spalius. Don't have anything. I normally, I normally have a sheet music of a tune, which I'll probably use. But some of the tunes I already know, so I'll probably just write it on spalius. So then when I've got it, I've got it. But normally, it just bounces out. Well, I, I do hope on um, Facebook you'll, you'll put some contact details. So anyone watching this video fancies getting a copy of some of this unpublished wonderful music and sort of go, Mr. Shelley, sir, how do I get a copy of this? And, uh, yeah, I know all I got told, I know two pieces should be scheduled soon. So one of my pieces should be scheduled soon is a piece called Majesty, which I wrote for the USA Wrestling Staff Band, which I got commissioned for. And that recently got played at the Canadian Staff Band 50th anniversary oh yes so yeah i was i was glad to get a dvd of it to watch it but yeah but then the first time i met neil was in because i never met neil i never met anybody i didn't know anybody from the band apart from kevin larson that's the only person i yeah. knew and then when i went over i met neil for the first time steve cobb introduced me to neil and then a piece of, i might be having another piece with like music soon but that's in no details at the moment uh, okay, let's let's go to another question. Favorite Salvation Army song? Have you got one at the moment? <laughs> Favorite Salvation Army song is it's going to be. I've got two. <laughs> that's normally the case. Uh, Storm the Fort of Darkness. That's one of my favorites. Okay, yeah. Especially the scripture based arrangement by Nicholas Samuel. Yeah, because you got the best funky drum part ever. Yeah, and another one is 
I, I know we don't sing it a lot now, but it's a piece by Leslie Condon, I think. Oh, that name um, again, lovely. I can't remember what the tune is. It, no, Eternal God. That's what oh, it's on the phrase. Eternal yeah. God. Da, 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 da. That's no, my favourite song. Second or third composer to admit that. Uh, Les Condon's ears must be ringing in heaven. So, um, yeah. Um, same again with Bible scripture references. Do you have any favourites at the moment? Um, one, one, um, one Bible scripture is going to be um, one what we use in Nexus is John 3.16. God so loved the world, they gave his only son. That's got to be one of my favourites. A lovely one to pick. So, um, as a fellow percussionist, in Salvation Army terms, when you've got the drum kit and the bells and the whistles, what would you love to, what would you be uh, your request on the stand to get the, the blood flowing? I don't know. Anything difficult, but not the piece, Daniel. Hey, I'm, I'm not being horrible. I've had enough playing Daniel. Daniel is one of the, Daniel is one of the pieces that he really wants me to play, but I'm thinking, I've had enough of Daniel now. Mr. I, Mr. Not Mr. to be Cooper, not, sir, don't tell Barry Gott. I'm not to be anything to um, Barry Gott. I've never met the guy, but I know he, he was some fantastic music. I know. Absolutely. Yeah, but Daniel is one of the pieces i probably not probably won't play. If I if I asked her, yes. But one of the pieces I do like um if I've got the stuff is Sam Creamers. I do like Sam Creamers music. Um speaking to him next. So Yes, yeah, so Sam Creamers a piece piece of music I love to be on the stands because I like I do love his drum part. I know how I know how he loves to run drum parts. So yes. I suppose you've got room in his house for all his drums. Yes. Uh, um, so, what when you from starting writing to today, what would you say was your biggest lesson that you've learned in your compositions and your writing and arranging? Um, the biggest lesson is don't write big so early. Okay. Because I used because I used to start writing big music, like long pieces, short pieces. Andrew Bryce said, start small grow big and harmony. Harmony is the main problem I had. But he knows I've been writing big music and my harmony is getting loads better. So now because I don't write much small pieces, I write like for general or British brass band music or normally triumph series. So for my core band I normally write triumph series and then full percent outside band for general. So yeah, that's what Andrew Blow said in Northern Ken Down. It starts small, finish big. So, and the important thing is you enjoy it. It's a challenge. Yes, I do enjoy it. It's a challenge. But sometimes it can get a bit frustrating if you can't if you don't know your pace, but normally it's it, it's fun. Right. And it's a challenge. I've just put the recording on pause for a few seconds because I forgot to ask you beforehand. Um, do you mind if I pray with you before we finish? Yes. Okay. Um, it was, um, it's all been recorded. So, um, thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh. I, I need to meet you, but to yeah. um, talk about composition and the nuts and bolts of a typical. Shelly piece of music and there was there was one question you asked and just got the answer. I've only just got the answer. Oh go on, go on. So um and also uh, I've got a question going back to Staple Hill was provide piece for Staple Hill band as well. Um when I got commissioned to write piece so Josh Deakins who will know quite well um introduced me to a piece. I do know him. I knew, I knew I knew his missus at the time, very well. But he said, he said, can you write a piece for Staple? I won't have a band master yet. One piece. He wants something hard, fun, and exciting, and fast. That's the only things I had. Hard, fun, exciting, and fast. Then since then, I've had strong connection with Staple. I'm basically, when they hear a piece, they know it's a Shelley piece. Yeah. 
So one of my one of the pieces for comedy mental pain at the moment is a piece called Grace, which I wrote for a commission, no, which I wrote for a, a farewell concert for Joel Watson, which Lee Heiter Nichols asked me to do for his concert, and the theme was based on Grace because that, that was his piece was the place was called Messages of Grace, yeah. and they wanted me to use the tune Your Grace it Still Amazes Me. Yeah. And it touched, and now it's the world premiere that night. Ian Fowler left the band, and it was a very touching piece. And I know that brought a lot of people blessings that day. Good to hear. And I know Nexus love it, and normally Nexus talk about my pieces every day. So it's nice to know that your pieces are bringing blessings to people, and that God is using yes. you in an effective manner. And that's a real um, comfort to hear. And yes. positive news for you that all this doodling away and concentration isn't going, is not being wasted at all. And people, no. Use, um, one, yeah, I forgot to ask you one question before we go because we've got to close soon. Um, what's the weirdest place, the most, you know, that you never thought you'd hear of a piece of your music being played that brought a real shock to us? Oh my goodness! <laughs> or not, as the case may be. It's probably when I got told when Birmingham Seal was playing my piece at the Symphony Hall at Christmas. No, nice. I didn't know. I didn't. They, because going back to summer school, I said to Gavin, "Say, we're going to be Christmas pieces at the moment going on." I was thinking, well, I've got one due to be published in like three weeks or so. And so I'll send you the music. Here you go. And next thing is, I want to use it at um, at this recording. Symphony and also being and also another piece called Majesty being used at their commissioning over mm. in the USA. And also when I've got told they're gonna use it on the Canadian staff bands DVD as well. I didn't know about that. That for big shot, we get well. So yeah, probably be Symphony Hall and also in and in Canada as well. Okay, well I'll, we're gonna go before this thing burns itself out. So I'll say Okay. Thank you very much for your time. It's been given no time for talking about your inspirations and just being a, a thoroughly decent chap. And uh, no worries. all the rest of it. I will close this with a prayer and ask God's blessing on you. Lord, we clearly have an inspirational leader in front of us. Someone who is treasured, inspiring, supported, is supportive, and who is clearly listening for your voice and your message in his work. So I pray for Samuel. I pray that the Sherry compositions will continue to come for many years to come, that he will find great enjoyment and blessing out of writing for a myriad of bands, not just army bands, but those secular bands that just want something that brings a bit of happiness to their life. And we pray for that, Lord, and we pray for all the people that Sam comes into contact with and uh, is effective in sharing the music and the spirituality with and that your word and your Holy Spirit is a guiding force in his life. I leave him now in your hands Lord and pray your blessing upon him as he continues to serve you in so many different ways and that he will feel you really close to him in those sticky periods and that blessing on his heart when something just clicks and he goes yes Lord that's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Sam and his work. Amen. Amen.